In this video, I'm going to show you how to measure very small quantities of liquid chemicals accurately. Um, the first thing you're going to need is a very small graduated cylinder, which is capable of measuring in single milliliter increments. This one here does up to 25 milliliters. Um, and I've got another one which is even more finely graduated. This one can do up to 10 milliliters, and it's graduated in one-tenth of a milliliter um, gradations. For, mo for the most part, you don't need something this accurate. Most chemicals that you're going to work with that require small quantities to be measured out, like rodinol or HC110, something like this is fine. Measuring out the chemicals seems like it's pretty straightforward. You pour them into the graduate until the level of the chemical gets up to however many milliliters you want. Um, in reality, it's not quite that simple. Here you can see that I've measured out some rodinol, and if you look at the uh, top of the chemical, it looks like there's a double line there. Um, the question is, what sh should you measure from what you see, the bottom line or the top line? Now the answer is that you should measure from the bottom line. Um, and if you look at that, um, I'm not sure how easy it is to see in the video, but I've got it measured out to 10 milliliters. Um, but the top line is a little bit higher than that. It's about, it's actually almost 11 milliliters if you go by that line. The 10 milliliter line is the accurate one. When you pour chemicals into a graduated cylinder to measure them, you'll find if you look carefully that the chemicals, the top of the chemical column is not flat, as you would expect it to be. What's happening is that some of the chemicals, a very small amount of it, are drawn slightly up the sides of the container by surface tension. This produces a curve shape at the top of the chemical column. This curve shape is called the meniscus. And when you're measuring chemicals, you always want to measure at the bottom of the meniscus. And that meniscus can appear sort of as a double line because you can see um, the way the chemicals look when you're looking through them. They're a little bit lighter in the, in the meniscus than they are in the bottom part of the chemical column where it's solid chemicals. Um, so you want to make sure that you always measure at the bottom of the meniscus, not at the top, because the graduated cylinders are actually designed so that they're calibrated to take into account the fact that the meniscus does exist. And so the accurate calibration is at the bottom of that curved shape, not the top. And as you saw when I showed you the actual chemicals poured into, a, into the graduate down in my darkroom, um, there was almost a one milliliter difference between measuring at the bottom and the top of the meniscus. And that can be, really, uh, that can be a very big difference if you're measuring a chemical like rodinol or HC110 or PMK that depends on using very highly dilute solutions being off by one milliliter in the amount of stock solution you pour into the water with a chemical like, like rodinol will make, uh, it could actually make quite a bit of a difference in the results that you get with your developing. It can make the chemicals quite a bit stronger or weaker depending on how far off you are and in what direction. The meniscus isn't just a concern when you're measuring out small amounts of chemicals in small graduates. As you can see in this larger graduate that I'm working with here, which is one that can do up to a liter, I've measured out 12 12 ounces of water, and you can see that a meniscus is also formed here. So, at the bottom of the meniscus shows a measurement of 12 ounces, but the top of the meniscus shows about 12 and a quarter, maybe even close to 12 and a half. So it's important even when you're measuring larger amounts of chemicals that you also take into account that inaccuracy that can come from measuring at the top of the meniscus instead of the bottom. I want to finish with two more considerations for accurate measurement. One is that your graduates that you measure with have to be clean and dry before you start. Especially with the very small graduates for measuring out little amounts, if there's a few drops of water in there from where you've rinsed it out and haven't gotten it dry, those drops of water are going to mix in with whatever chemical you pour in and are going to throw off your measurement. So if you're doing, like my first example of 10 milliliters of rodinol, a few drops of water in that graduate, that could increase the apparent amount of chemical in there by almost a milliliter and can throw off the amount that you're measuring. And so it's important that everything be clean and dry before you get started. Another consideration, too, is that when you do your measurements, the graduate needs to be sitting on a level counter. If you're holding it up in your hand while you're trying to measure, you're not going to be holding the graduate straight, which can throw off the measurements. You know, if you look at this one here, if I'm tilting it because I'm not holding it perfectly straight, the measurements are changing. And so in order to get the most accurate measurements, it needs to sit on a level counter or table. Another thing too that relates to that is that if you look at the if you look at the graduate from different angles, it's going to throw off the measurements. 
if I'm standing here, I'm looking at this graduate that I just showed you while I'm standing straight up, you're going to get a different measurement than if you look at it straight on at eye level. And so it's important that you look at the graduate at eye level to ensure that you're going to get the most accurate measurements. Now this shows clearly how important it is to look at the graduate at eye level when you measure. Um, right now I'm standing straight up and looking at it from an angle, looking at it from above. And you can see that it looks like we have almost 13 ounces of water in there. Well in reality there's only 12. And if you get down on my, if I get down on my knees here and look at it straight on at eye level, we can then clearly see at the bottom of the meniscus there, it's 12, it's 12 ounces. So whenever I do any measurements for chemicals, I always get down on my knees and look at it right at eye level while it's sitting on the counter to get the most accurate measurement.